are the minutes from the Committee of the Whole meeting of December 9th, 2013. The recommendation is that they be received. Moved by Councillor Kinney. Seconded by Councillor Cunningham. Are there any errors or omissions? Question. Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. Those minutes are received. The next item on the agenda under reports and recommendations. There's a report from the Chief Financial Officer. Uh, security issuing resolution and it comes with the recommendation that council approve the borrowing from the Municipal Finance Authority of British Columbia as part of their 2014 spring issue. The amount is seven million dollars as authorized through loan authorization bylaw number 3333 2013 authorizing borrowing of funds to be lent to the Prince Rupert Airport Authority for the purposes of capital improvements, and that the Skeena Queen Charlotte Regional District be requested to consent to our borrowing over a 20-year period and include the borrowing in their security issuing bylaw. That's the recommendation. It's been moved by <laughs> Councillor Kinney, seconded by Councillor Garon. Uh, <coughs> Mrs. Bombin, as the Chief Financial Officer, have you got anything to add to the recommendation at this time? No, I don't. Thank you. Discussion from members of Council regarding the recommendation. Councillor Thorkelson. Um, I, I have always been uh, in favor of um, uh, borrowing this money and uh, forwarding it to the um, airport authority to spend to make our uh, – to, to – um, uh, better the facilities at our, at our airport, but I am opposed to the process uh, that we went through, and um, uh, I will be voting against this motion due to the process that we went through for for the um, uh, which I voted against as well uh, earlier. But I don't like the um, petition approval process, right. Your Worship, and so uh, I plan to uh, vote against this, not because. I've never been opposed to the loan going to the airport authority. I've always been opposed to the method of um, um, of approval. Of approval. Certainly. Thank you. Anything further? Question. Question's been called. Councillor Cunningham. There's no way. That this Please use your microphone so people at home can you yeah. can hear you. There's no way that this will impact the city as far as paying anything back at any time. No, there isn't. It, it's bulletproof. Yes, it is. Okay. Perhaps, Mrs. Bombin, you'd like to provide the background to Councillor Cunningham. He wasn't here at the start of this process. As to the amount of the loan, who who will pay for it, how it will be funded, the term of the loan. Mr. Worship, the term is for 20 years, uh, based on some conservative projections of um, – people flying in and out of the airport. It will be funded entirely by user fees, and given the projections, they can actually repay it probably with a short, shorter term than the 20 years. We're using the 20 years just to uh, be a little bit more conservative, but if they actually get the projections that they are expecting, they may be able to repay it in 10 years. Anything further? Councillor Ashley. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to echo Councillor Thorkelson's statement. However, I, I will be voting in favor because I, even though I am totally against the process we went through, um, I just I think that this is something that now is is pretty much a, a done deal, and there is a, a time sensitive nature to it. So, okay, thank you. There's nothing further. I'll call for the question. Question. Question has been called. Those in favor. Thank you. That's adopted. Those opposed? Please show for the record that Councillor Thorkelson is opposed. Uh, next for Council's consideration are bylaws. There are four different bylaws tonight. Uh, the first one is Cemetery Fees and Charges Amendment Bylaw, number 3338, 2014. It comes with a recommendation that Council introduce and give first, second, and third reading to the Cemetery Fees and Charges Amendment Bylaw of the number just stated and the year just stated. I'll ask uh, that staff provide, because we do have people 
not only in the gallery but at home watching by television, they provide some background as to the purpose of this bylaw. The previous bylaw for the cemetery uh, expired at the end of December 31st, 2013. So to uh, provide good um, fees going forward to make sure that we can care cover all the costs and to keep everything current uh, with all of our bylaws, we are proposing an increase for the next three years. Um, it provides some predictability for many people. Um, with regards to the cemetery, 5% uh, was used to cover off the cost of um, energy costs, wage costs, uh, that sort of thing for the next three years. Certainly. Thank you. I'll ask Council's consideration of the recommendation to introduce bylaw number 3338-2014 and give it first, second, and third reading. Councillor Ashley. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Thorkelson. Uh, for a while, what, what we were doing is, is um, um, which I, I preferred, which is having a three or a multi-year schedule so that you could have a little bit of a raise every year instead of having to redo it and then sit. Because what had happened when I first came on council right. was that uh, we had – um, we've had no increases on many of the user fee fees yeah. and um, uh, for for many years. And so what happened is you just get this whopping big increase yeah. and then five years with no increase and then a whopping big increase. And so at that time, Jim Bruce, who was our, fin our fin chief financial officer, he suggested that we do it a little by little. So you have some this year, some next year, so that, that you don't get hit over the head with a big increase, but you do it little by little. And so I was wondering if, if uh, staff had had um, had thought about that, and if so, uh, w w what their thinkings may be. Certainly. We'll get a comment from staff. Mrs. Bombin. Uh, just for comparative purposes, the cemetery, the previous cemetery bylaw actually went up 20% each year for three years. So this 5% is actually the small increases that uh, one of our predecessors, uh, Jim Bruce, actually uh, suggested. Okay, so it's been moved. Is there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Kinney. Any further discussion? Question. Question's been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That's adopted. We'll move on to the Water Regulation and Rates Amendment Bylaw. Uh, it's bylaw number 3339 2014. It comes with a recommendation that Council give first, second, and third reading to the Water Regulation and Rates Amendment Bylaw of the said number and year. Mrs. Bombin, would you please provide the background as to the change to water rates and the purpose and the reason why? The water rates are. We're pro pro proposing a 5% increase over the next three years as well. Uh, mainly it's um, used to cover the increases in energy costs, aging infrastructure maintenance, and systematic replacement of deteriorating water and sewer lines, which would be the next bylaw as well. Um, it is expected that the proposed utility increases will be sufficient to fund needed operating maintenance and proposed capital costs. Thank you. The condition of the city's water lines are such that approximately 25% of the water lines in the city are pre-1925. So the, these services, uh, that infrastructure when it was installed was thought to last approximately a generation, which is 70 years. So there's more change out to be done. I'll ask Council's consideration of the recommendation. Councillor Ashley. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Garan. Is there any discussion? Question. Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That's adopted. Next, we'll move on to the Sewer Regulations and Rates Amendment Bylaw, number 3340-2014. Recommendation is that Council give first, second, and third readings to the Sewer Regulation and Rates Amendment Bylaw of the number and year just mentioned. Mrs. Bombin, would you like to provide the background, please? 
Again, this one is a 5% increase over the next three years. It mirrors the water bylaw. Sewer is 98% of water fees, and it is for the exact same reasons as the previous. Based on water in, water out. All right. Thank you. I'll ask Council's consideration of the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Garan, seconded by Councillor Kinney. Is there any discussion? Councillor Cunningham. These three increases. Please, please use your mic so people Sorry. at home Sorry. can hear you. Uh, these three increases, I talked to Kareen, and they, she says they're going to add up to approximately $50 per household. It could be. We'll get a comment from her. Mrs. Bomb. Yes, uh, Councillor Cunningham is also jumping ahead to the solid waste one, which is also, again, 50% as well, 5% as well increase. So, yes, the three uh, bylaws together add up to four residential is $50 per year. It's $19 for water, $19 for sewer, and $12 for solid waste. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cunningham. Well, it just seems like you didn't put up the taxes, but again, we're putting up our utilities, and we have one of the highest utility rates in the area from what I understand. This is Bombin. Our utilities are self-funding, which means that we don't want to borrow from any of our operating funds, which would be from property taxes, to maintain them. Um, as the mayor has mentioned, we've also uh, got quite an aging infrastructure, so 5% is actually a fairly modest increase to try and maintain all of it. Thank you. Councillor Cunningham. Well, I guess it's an, an evil we've got to put up with, but it just seems that... Uh, since they split up the utilities and the taxes, the utilities just seem to keep to climbing. And it's a bit of a concern for me, especially for people on fixed income and things like this. Yeah, you're certainly correct. And, uh, and I echo what you say there. Uh, utilities, though, have to be self-liquidating. And, of course, uh, local government, uh, municipalities, budgets have to be uh, self-funded. So we don't have a, a lot of options. It would be nice if we didn't have to replace aging infrastructure because we could be a little easier on all these rates. Yep. Your comment is noted, though. Thank you. Mr. Mandrick, where are we, sir? The Sewer and Regulations and Rates Amendment Bylaw Number 3340-2014. It's uh, been moved and seconded. And, has, and just needs to be carried. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion is carried. The last consideration under bylaws this evening is the Solid Waste Amendment Bylaw, number 3341, 2014. And the recommendation, again, is that Council give first, second, and third reading to the Solid Waste Amendment Bylaw of the stated number and year. Mrs. Bombin, would you like to provide the background as to the need for this? The need is the same. It's a 5% increase to cover the energy costs, and also we have a replacement cost for, um, uh, sorry, closure cost for the solid waste landfill, which we also have to budget for every single year. Right. Thank you. I'll ask Council's consideration. Councillor Ashley. Certainly. I'll move this. I forgot where you were there for I a did. minute. Yeah, right. Okay. So it, thank you. It's been moved. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Garon. Any discussion? Questions been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion is adopted. Yes, please go ahead. This is related to the uh, solid waste amendment bylaw, but it's not the actual bylaw. Um, something we've been discussing at the regional district has been recycling and the costs of res uh, like the recycling, and also about trying to work together more in terms of what goes in the landfill and what doesn't go in the landfill. And uh, I personally think, even though I know we've been making strides towards it, that we need to be more strict in terms of what is being allowed into the landfill and what's being diverted to the recycling. And I'm wondering if we could also maybe uh, add talking about um, that to our strategic priorities uh, workshop on, on uh, Friday. C certainly. And uh, I believe we're all aware, and it's had to be put over until 2014, but there still is uh, the consideration for construction of a 24-hour 
or recycling uh, transfer station. And that could possibly encourage people because then, of course, they're free on their own schedule to go out there and drop things off. Please go ahead. Um, just a, a brief update on that. It's looking like probably towards the end of March, early April is where yes. they're they're looking at. So quite hopeful. There's been a few things, uh, glitches in the way, but uh, it looks like it should be happening soon. All right. Councillor Thorkelson. Uh, my son just came uh, from Castlegar for Christmas, and, and he lives not in Castlegar. He lives outside Castlegar and uses their solid waste. Of, uh, he has to cart his cart his uh, garbage to the dump and he said there's actually a sorting site right at the right at the um right, right at, at the, the transfer station right at the transfer right. station and that uh um and that they actually have somebody there recycling nazi he calls them but uh it's a person there who insists that they recycle and so so they actually watch the recycling that's going on so to make sure that you're not putting stuff into the landfill that should be recycled. So like the like batteries or any any of those kinds of things that people just kind of are hoping are just going to disappear in there or 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 all of the other stuff they can recycle. And um he said they started uh but I guess they had some bear problems or something. They started a um um uh, compost. compost, yeah. Right. And uh he said they're not doing that now. So um so I asked him if he was composting his own. He said yes, but I don't know if that's just because I'm his mother. He said that. But anyway, so what I do want to say is that, you know, that's one of the things that um, that that I think that that as as we progress at the solid um, at the landfill, that we should be looking at uh, trying to uh, have some kind of sorting available for there for uh, see. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many people would do it, and I'm not sure uh, how much, you know, if it, if, if it would just be a bunch of empty bins filling up the water or whether it would actually be used or if people would stop at the recycling on their way out to the dump and, and do it there instead. So I, I, I don't know, but it's certainly something that we should think about. Certainly. Thank you. I'm not sure who was first here. Councillor Garon. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to add on to Joy's comments, um, I know that I, I go to the dump once a week, if sometimes once, twice, twice a month, but at least once a week. And there are there's so much stuff going into those bins that shouldn't be in there. And if we had other containers out at the dump where people could sort while they're out there, it would make a huge difference. And the other problem with our dump is when you go in and you want to recycle while you're in there, you have to pay to recycle. So you know, there's times I go in with a little bit of metal. Well, I've got to dump that in the bin. I'm getting charged for dumping metal. I've, sometimes I just go in to, you know, drop one bag of foam off, and then I've got to dump some metal, and I'm paying for the metal. So, um, you know, more people would be more, it would be more accessible if they weren't, if somehow they could dump their recycling off before they go there. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Councillor Cunningham. One of the problems is our dump is so far from the city. And I don't know if people are going to, if they have a bunch of stuff to recycle, if they're going to go that far. You know, I know the recycling center in the industrial park closes at certain times and that, and that's been a problem. If they could put bins along the side of the road and then on Monday or Tuesday just empty them, I, I really don't know. But that, I was that's, what, that's what they're uh, going to build this year Okay, in March. Okay. Yeah. You can go out there at your own time and, and drop off your recyclables. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to get inside the compound. Perfect. Yeah. Mr. Long, have you got any additional items this evening? Okay, I'll ask you for the city manager's report then. <clears throat> yeah, Your Worship, thank you. Um, I don't have anything to report this time. I'll report later on this month. And Christmas and New Year's rolling. get in the way? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll go to the council then for reports, questions, and inquiries from members of council. Councillor Ashley, then Councillor Thorkelson. Um, I just wanted to, to bring something up that hopefully maybe we can pass on to the port. I have had several people, um, while it's not huge noise complaints, that, that have been complaining about some of the noise from the Pinnacle pellet plant. Um, in particular, I, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know, a droning or a humming sound that kind of is continually there. Um, and I just 
there were a couple of things that I'm wondering if we can find out from from the port uh, because when we went through the process I remember asking we, we all asked a lot of questions but I remember asking about noise because people were concerned about the, the the trains and stuff down there and there was some concern about the the plant actually running and what that would be like this seems to be more of a the plant running um, type of issue but um, Number one, what I'm wondering is, uh, do they have to follow the city noise bylaw? Um, because when the ships are loading, I think sometimes it takes them 30 or 40 hours to load the ship. Um, and if it's going, I mean, it's one thing if you're having to listen to the drone, you know, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. But if you got to listen to that all night, you know, maybe we could work something out there. Because I know when we talked to the port uh, about these different things, the port did indicate to us that if there were things that were... Uh, promised to us that there would be some ability for them to step in and make sure that things happened. I also remember um, some talk about having some sort of a noise barrier put up and I'm not sure where that was in the environmental assessment process but uh, I, what I'm wondering is if we can just maybe uh, make an inquiry of the port and see what if anything can be done. Certainly. I know that the we were told that there would be uh, off-site monitoring equipment for noise and dust and that there would be a certain criteria set. And if that self-monitoring equipment indicated that they were more noise or more dust than was deemed acceptable, as was set by an operating agreement, that the entity would be shut down and forced to make it acceptable within the guidelines that all parties were cognizant of. But uh, certainly, staff, Mr. Long, would you make those inquiries, please? Is there anything further from members of council? Councillor Thorkelson. Yes, um, I, I, I read something, that I, and, and I maybe should have brought it in the closed meeting, but I don't think I'm going to be spilling any beans since it's on the Internet. Um, this is something we received from... Um, the province of British Columbia. It's regarding uh, local government, regarding public input uh, on uh, the cost of running for elections. Right. And they plan to limit costs for running for civic elections. Uh, limit limit amount of spending that. Yes, spending. Thank you. Uh, yes. Individuals running for council positions could spend. Right. So somebody can't spend a million dollars, and and somebody else end up spending five. They're going to try to have some legislation that's going to make sure that um, um, that things are fair. And so anyway, so it's on the website and I, and uh, public, it says that public, um, it says that public participation is invited uh, to comment on this paper um, uh, by uh, January 31st. And it says that um, uh, please provide, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, they want some, they got a place to give electronic feedback. And, um, and I think that, uh, uh, that we should somehow make this available, whether it, it, it's not, it wasn't in the, in the package. So I was wondering if we can make it available, if somebody wants to get it there, or just make the, on our website, <laughs> Uh, make a reference or to, to so somebody can just click on our website and go right to their website. Sure. I think it's important because anybody who wants to um, uh, run will be uh, impacted by this. Um, and, and it's actually, a, 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 I read it last night, it's actually quite an interesting uh, paper with quite a bit of interesting information. It, it, on what it is an interesting cost. read and there's there's no shortage of detail in it, but it is part of the uh, democratic process, and so I think it's appropriate. Uh, Mr. Long, can you see that that is put on the city website? Thank you. Councillor, yes, go ahead. Well, I had one other thing, yeah? and, and it was um, um, uh, there's a piece in the Northern Connector, and it talked to uh, about uh, Terrace Council sees need for LNG education. So I was wondering if um, uh, they're talking about having an event, and I was wondering if maybe we should talk to them if they're bringing people up 
that maybe we could ask those same people to come to Rupert and uh, edify us as well as edifying Terrace. Sort of mystery to me where Terrace fits into this uh, whole LNG process, but um, um, the 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 uh, Terrace says that um, he proposed that Terrace seek to bring more groups together for a similar meeting than that Nathan Cullen had. In the future, where speakers from various perspectives could be hosted in three or four months. And so, um, some suggestions from council included Councillor Stacy Tyers suggesting that when consultants come to Terrace in February to do a housing needs assessment that they could be included in one of the public meetings. Are we going to have a housing needs as assessment? Like, I, I really didn't know that there was a port in Terrace. I think I think we just describe them as keeners at this point. <laughs> so anyway. But uh, with regard to your request, uh, the BG group has already been in the community. They hosted a dinner. Uh, they invited people. There was people there from all over the community. And uh, they did give a presentation on liquefied natural gas and the transportation of it. And then after the dinner was over, they had people set up in various areas of the room, and you could go and get an overview of the projected routes for the LNG pipeline. Spectra Energy was there, who's working in conjunction with the BG group. Uh, they also had representatives there that showed the routing of vessels transiting and also some of the infrastructure that they wanted to build in support of the construction uh, of an LNG facility on Ridley Island. Uh, they also had people there to talk about the emissions from an LNG facility, and they had other people there to talk about such things as the socioeconomic impact and the kind of jobs that were available. And it was very well done, and I'm, it's, I know that every time somebody schedules an event or picks a date, you automatically lose people. But it uh, it was a very good venue, and I hope the other companies that are interested in liquefied natural gas in our area also do that because uh, it's a way for the local residents to go and ask in layman's terms about things and find out really on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You get to talk to these individuals who have a fair amount of expertise. Please go ahead. Uh, you, you worship. I, I, I from this article, I got it was more than just the uh, proponents coming in to um, uh, um, to speak uh, to their projects. Uh, it it wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't put it past uh, any proponent to maybe go easy on some of the problems. Uh, um, and pass and, and and maybe minimize some of the problems that that uh, could be uh, seen in the future and um, uh, and and I sort of get by this is is that they want to have a sort of a balanced presentation mm -hmm. and I, and I'm looking at a balanced presentation I mean you know I I um, uh, you know I am. Uh, I have I have discussed both with BG and, and Petronas about the emissions and um, um, and what they plan to do and how they plan to handle the emissions. Um, um, I've also had done a little bit of research in other areas now about the kinds of, of problems you can have from emissions, um, whether they where we need scrubbers or not having scrubbers, what they would cost, what what the guarantee is that the gas that comes to Prince Rupert, they say is coming to Prince Rupert's already going to be scrubbed. What guarantees do we have that's going to be scrubbed? What kind of guarantees could we ask to make sure that that is the government uh, legislates if it's going to be scrubbed somewhere else? It doesn't come here through of, full of um, sulfur and, and um, other chemicals that will uh, create uh, problems for us here if they're not scrubbed. So, so those are the kinds of things that unless you know about the issues, you don't know about how the issues can be resolved and then what is the impact. So if, if, if you only have one day out of 365 that there's a sulfur problem, maybe there's no sulfur problem. But if you have it every day, maybe there is a sulfur problem. So, uh, you know, I, that's... I took from this article in the paper, I didn't talk to anybody from Terrace, took from the article in the paper that they're looking for a balanced kind of, of discussion. And, and, I, and I would like to see that kind of balanced discussion. Certainly. I think perhaps because they're part of the Terrace Kitimat Airshed there, which is different than ours. Councillor Cunningham. Uh, 
I agree 100% with Joy. Like, we just have to go back to the pinnacle plant. They give you nice flowery pictures and tell you they're going to do this and that, and then nothing gets done. And this is a lot bigger situation, a lot bigger problem if it's not done. And they renege on some of the things they put up front. You know, like a bouquet of flowers can wither pretty fast. And, you know, a lot of us sitting here, myself included, don't know a lot about LNG. And it would be a definite lesson for some of us here to learn what are the right questions to ask. Because we're sitting here, and Joy just brought up a few things that I've never even heard about. And, uh, you know, it, it would be very good for us to be able to go into a meeting and be educated enough to ask specific questions and get specific answers and hold them accountable to those answers. Thank you. Further comments on this or any other topics? Councillor Garon. Oh, I'm going low down on the totem pole now. Phone book. Um, some people haven't gotten their phone books and don't know their garbage schedule. And I looked online the other day and the old schedule is still on the website. So I'm wondering when that will be updated. Okay. Mr. Long says tomorrow. Okay. I was touting I was yeah I was touting how good our website was and then I looked on it and it wasn't up to date so Is there anything further <laughs> Councillor Kinney Thank you your worship I would just like to uh send a special thanks to the uh regional hospital here because of the work they're doing in keeping the people away and looking after people coming in and out with the flu that's going around they're handling it really well and uh you know, they're, they deserve a lot of respect for that. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> yes, please go ahead, Councillor Ashley. Uh, I'm just wondering th uh, through you to staff, um, have we heard back from CN at all from our inquiry about having them come meet with us? Okay, thank you. Okay. If there's nothing further, I'll provide the uh, mayor's report. Participated in the annual general meeting of the Prince Rupert Airport Authority. As the mayor is a representative of the authority's owner, along with Councillor Garan, who is also a representative of the authority's owner. The owner is the city of Prince Rupert and the residents. The Prince Rupert Airport Authority is operated through its board of directors and the management and employees. I attended a Prince Rupert Marina project stakeholders meeting to review the most current designs and information and proposed location and financial considerations of the project were also discussed. I attended the council meeting of the District of Port Edward to listen to the presentation by the Prince Rupert Airport Authority concerning the upgrading and improvements planned for the airport commencing in 2014. Improvements to the surface of the runway are also planned with the support of Transport Canada. And the Prince Rupert Airport Authority has also advised that the airport passenger volumes have shown a 3.22% increase in the first 11 months of 2013. I attended the Prince Rupert Friendship House Festival Season Dinner. Uh, and, uh, pardon me, the Prince Rupert Friendship House Festive Season Dinner and provided greetings on behalf of City Council. The Friendship House uh, are providing a variety of programs in the city, and some of these programs are for young people ages 13 to 16 years, and the hours of that operation for those young people through the Youth Hub are from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., and that is on uh, Monday to Friday. And... Uh, for those interested, the Friendship House invites you to find out what programs they're offering and how to participate. And some of the activities includes crafts, swimming, skating, kayaking, softball, aquafit, gym activities, cultural activities, painting, cooking, financial literacy, uh, resume, cover letter writing, uh, dancing. Uh, there's girls' nights, boys' nights. There's also hiking. And uh, there's a homework club and involvement in community events. I uh, also attended the festive season gathering hosted by other elected government representatives for our region and area. 
those being our Member of Parliament, Nathan Cullen, and our Member of the Legislative Assembly, Jennifer Rice. I attended the annual Canadian Union of Public Employees Local 105 Christmas Social, and it was attended by 120 out of 160 of the QP members. I attended the Airport Authority meeting to discuss growth opportunities in 2014 and increasing area activities at the airport, and Councillor Garon was also in attendance. And I attended the opening of the Pacific Northwest Liquefied Natural Gas Community Office in downtown Prince Rupert, and the, of the office there is open to the public to discuss the proposed export terminal and uh, have the average citizen go in and have their questions answered. Uh, on behalf of the City of Prince Rupert residents, I want to thank Ridley Terminals for providing a free of charge afternoon on Saturday, December 21st, 2013 to allow people to use the entire recreation complex, uh, whether people wish to go skating, swimming, or the activities in the gymnasium or auditorium. I attended the Prince Rupert Senior Center Pancake Breakfast for January 2014, and once again, those breakfasts are open to the public for their participation. And the City of Prince Rupert is pursuing discussions with the Government of British Columbia and the ministries responsible covering the following three items. The inclusion of the city's watershed within the municipal boundaries, the continuing removal of the residual chemicals left at Watson Island, and concerns for the proposed reduction of service provided by BC Ferries to and from Prince Rupert. And the last item, uh, Prince Rupert City Council and staff will soon be having strategic plan discussions. During those discussions, the City Council may wish to consider the effects of the proposed developments within the District of Port Ed, including Lilu Island, within the City of Prince Rupert, including Ridley Island, and adjacent Lac Quilams, including Grassy Point. This may be the appropriate time to start a dialogue about regional service delivery and benefits for this area on a sub-regional basis, either through new development tax revenues to be generated or on a fee-for-service basis. Such services and facilities as public transportation to all the communities and the airport through the Simpson Access Project and the use of a policing service for all of our communities, particularly with the increase in construction activity, as well as the regional use of the landfill and the recycling depot by the communities. And while it may seem premature, construction of these projects and increase in people and services may only be a year away. So if Council would like to consider that, we could discuss it at the strategic plan uh, process. Uh, there, there's a lot to be uh, to be considered there. Uh, public transit is a big issue, and the Simpson Access Project could certainly support that. That concludes my report. I'm not sure if there's anything further. Mr. Long, have you got anything else? Thank you. Councillor Thorkelson. Your Worship, on that, and, and maybe we can just discuss it on, on Friday, but the... Um I'm pretty sure the uh, 18th of February, but uh, but I might be wrong, is when the uh, provincial government said that they're going to have a agreement on um, on on sharing of, or tax uh, on taxation of LNG. They're going to come up with their LNG taxation system. I'm wondering if maybe as part of that we should be discussing um, sending a request to the province outlining what we would like to see as revenue so that we at least have what we think their revenue sharing should be, uh, you know, so that we can have a look at these increased services that we're going to need to provide. So I'm just wondering if we should uh, have, a, have, have, um, have a discussion about that too. Well, let's get a comment from staff as to whether it would be appropriate and this is uh, uh, the, the time to do it. Mr. Long, any comments? Uh, sure, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> certainly, as part of the ongoing process, the council asked uh, staff to uh, uh, undertake some some months ago now. Um, uh, certainly, the sort of the the requirement for services for 
the anticipation of this kind of uh, rapid economic growth um, is is considered, and we we should uh, hopefully in the next three months have a good idea of what uh, what these service costs would uh, would look like uh, for the city of Prince Rupert. And and if the conversation is regional, we will be able to regionalize that uh, the understanding of delivery of those services. So we are still working towards having an understanding of our of our cost structure in the event of these these moving forward. Councillor Thurkelson. Uh, all I'm as concerned about is that if the provincial government makes some decisions without considering our needs or us having put our needs in into place, then they can make decisions without understanding that. So even if we can ballpark it or at least, you know, have some discussion anyway uh, along those lines, because I think whether it's regional or whether it's it's local, we need to wring some money out uh, um, of of that process, just the same as they did in the Northeast. I mean, you know, Fort St. John is far you know, better off because of the the amount of money that they have paid to their communities. And and I certainly am concerned about what you've talked in the past about perhaps having LNG uh, tax rates capped, uh, similar, maybe not the same, but similar to the port cap, and then us, uh, you know, not being able to meet our requirements because of that cap. And we should, I think, make it very clear that whether it's regionally or, or just Prince Rupert-wise, that, that we don't plan on subsidizing growth that's that's due to um, uh, because we have a cap on on what we're able to gain unless we are also having some kind of royalty resource sharing program certainly we're bringing up on Friday is there anything further I'll ask council for a motion to adjourn moved by councillor Ashley seconded by councillor Cunningham any discussion Questions been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion passes. This meeting stands adjourned.